my name is Samantha Bertani, and I will be doing my presentation on the Law of Prognose. In order to understand the Law of Prognose contributions to psychology, it is important to understand the branch of psychology that defines it. Gestalt psychology was founded by Max Wertheimer, Kurt Kafka, and Wolfgang Kochler. Gestalt's theory looks at understanding psychology in its whole form as opposed to compartmentalizing. This idea is echoed in Kurt Kafka's statement, the whole is other than the sum of its parts. Essentially, this means Gestalt psychologists feel it is important to focus on our whole perception or interpreted meaning of a stimulus because it is not the same as the individual incomplete or fragmented parts of the physical stimuli itself. This brings us to mention psychophysical isomorphism, which suggests that we apply meaning to information. Our mental experience is not the same as what our eyes see due to the brain imposing structure or transforming the information into complete information. What we've discussed so far relates greatly to the law of prognose. Prognos roughly translates to meaning. This law basically states that the brain will make the simplest interpretation of visual stimuli possible. This law is often referred to as the law of simplicity or good figure. It is said that the brain uses force fields to give meaning and structure to incoming information. It is organized in a symmetrical simple and regular fashion, and if circumstance allows, the psychological organization will always be done in this fashion. An example of the law of prognose can be seen in the Olympic rings logo pictured in the background of this slide. Our brain recognizes the stimuli as simply as possible, perceiving five circles that are interlocking. But in reality, the physical stimuli itself is much more complex. Curved lines split by another curved line again and again. So due to the law of prognose, we see the more familiar or similar circles. One way to explore the law of prognose is to look at perceptual constancy. This idea says that our perceptions are consistent or regular. We will respond to objects the same, although the physical stimuli may vary. Kofler explains this by suggesting that the relationship between objects stays the same, so the perception stays the same as well. There are multiple types of perception constancy. For example, size constancy is the tendency to perceive objects as being the same size, although size changes depending on the distance from the object. Additionally, there is shape constancy, the tendency to perceive objects as having the same shape regardless of the different angles it is viewed from. For example, if you are looking at a circular clock on a wall as you move around a room, the clock is seen at multiple angles, but it is still perceived as the same circular shape because of the meaning attached to the clock. Another type is color constancy, which is pictured below. This is the tendency to perceive familiar objects as having the same color under different illumination conditions. So the bowl of fruit would be perceived as relatively the same color as long as one is aware of the differences in lighting. Finally, there is object constancy, which encompasses all three of the above types. It basically states that familiar objects are perceived as a standard that be standard size, shape, and color, regardless of angle, distance, and illumination. When discussing the law of prognose, it's important to realize that often humans observe and apply the law to perceptions while also seeing other gestalt principles of perceptual organization. Therefore, they are not exclusive and are often paired. There are over 100 different principles. Some of the most well-known are depicted in the gestalt image above. Now the image of the World Wildlife Fund logo displays this idea that both the law of prognose and additional principles are present. The image demonstrates the law of prognose because instead of seeing many curves and complex shapes, our brain is organizing the image to be perceived in a simpler, more familiar form. This image also demonstrates the closure principle, which says we perceive 
incomplete objects as complete. Looking at the object's absence of information between the perceived ears and back, our brain is filling in details to see the closure and as a result, a familiar image of a panda. Many of these principles, including the law of prognos, have added greatly to knowledge on perception and cognition in psychology, as well as to other fields like art and advertisement. Thank you for taking the time to watch my presentation. If you have any questions, feel free to comment them below. The references I used most included a YouTube video titled The Gestalt Principles, Basics for Beginners, Chapter 14 of the text for this course, as well as Chapter 14 lecture titled Gestalt Psychology.